Hello everyone, my name is Hilda and welcome back to my channel. Now you may wonder, why is there this enormous nude Scamander bag on your copy stand? And uh, this is my new journaling on the go slash plein air bag. Uh, I keep seeing these cool leather bags everywhere and um, they're hella expensive. And I just do not want to spend hundreds of euros on a bag. I just don't. <laughs> I really don't. So I got this guy instead. Uh, I got him on shop for geek I can't remember how much he was. I think 50 euros, which is reasonable. Um, as you can see, he is very large. He's got a fat pocket here for a laptop, but it also fits a large Gansai palette, like what I have, because I have the big Kuretake one. Then there's a zipper pouch here, which you can put watercolors, and uh, I just chucked all the stationery in here that I haven't shown this month yet. And um, yeah, I realize that holding it open is not the easiest, but uh, I might just move it on my lap and then just like take things out as we go. First up though, I have a long arm stapler, a long reach stapler. In Dutch, they're um, lange arm nietjes machines. So um, yeah, it's just, uh, a Stanley one that I grabbed at um, Le Fure du Nord when I was in Lille. I was just like, ah, it's here. And it's anti-jam. It staples up to 20 pages. So uh, yeah, uh, of course you do have to put quality staples in it if you're going to try to staple up to 20 pages, like a, a fair amount of them. Because otherwise your staples, if you get like the cheap ones from Hema or Ikea, which are the ones I had. Um, because, you know, our regular staple goes up to like, what, five or six pages. It's just like a cheapo one. So we didn't need good staples. But um, yeah, if you're going to actually properly staple, buy proper staples. <laughs> so I need to do that. At one point there will be staples. It's not that practical to put it on my lap. Then I also have the Nude Skibander pouch and it's the same thing, fake letter, his logo. And this is supposed to be like a toiletry bag. Now, as you can see, it's pretty thin. Um, so I don't really know what toil toiletries you'd put in there other than like maybe a few thin ones. And uh, I just chucked regular like small items in it. Now I will say what makes it so good, because I would totally put it in my plein air bag and just like load it up with small things. Because this is a toiletry bag and actually the, the bag has the same lining. This is like the kind of water, I wouldn't say it's waterproof, but like water resistant material uh, that you can actually wipe and wash very easily. So um, if you get stains, you probably won't be able to remove him, but you can at least get your bag clean again, which is great. So yeah, I have some Japanese correction tapes. You can, of course, buy correction tapes in the local supermarket, uh, which I have been doing, but they're all big and bulky. And if they're used up, you have to chuck all that plastic. And I hated that. So I decided to buy these on pen store because you can refill them and I have bought cartridges for them as well. Um, so yeah, I like this. This is a Pentel one and this is a mystery brand one, but they will be linked in the description down below. Uh, it says plus made in Vietnam. So maybe this is like a Vietnamese tape, but um, in, not a Japanese one. Uh, but yeah, they're super practical. I always have one in my bag because like, look how tiny they are. So yeah, I love these a lot. Um, good stuff. I just like tested them once and then put them away in bags. Um, because yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was not going to use them like now because I'm using up uh, my other tapes first because uh, I still have like two from the supermarket. Um, and then I have some ink pads. I have this VersaFine one pigment ink for fine details. This is so, so good. I have been like struggling with these wood stamps, like so many people. Um, but even like some acrylic 
you know, the, the acrylic ones you peel off and you put on an acrylic block and then stamp with them. It has been a struggle and a half and it's been completely solved by this pad, which is amazing. Um, and then I have this small Versacolor one. It's not for fine details, details, it's just a regular one. But I figured that I could use this to do gold detailing on wax seals, which is why it's just like a small one. I thought that was like the ideal size. And then when I was in Dilla and Camilla, I couldn't resist to get like one of their gold stamp pads. And um, it is hot garbage. It is not good at all. You cannot get a nice fine stamp with it. It's impossible. So move that to the side. I'm going to give it to like my nephew who is um like four so he doesn't really mind. He just wants to stamp things, you know? Um, and yeah, and then I got a couple of stamps. I got this leaf and then I got a tiny bug and uh, a tiny leaf and I'm just going to quickly stamp them for you and um, let me get a wipe as well, so I can at least clean my stamps. There's one behind me, so... I have some scrap paper, which I doodled on testing a fountain pen. So yeah. Of course, now I have a stamp which doesn't really have a lot of fine details, but... You know, stamps the stamp, right? <laughs> There you go, goes on a like a dream. But these have fine details though. It's probably enough ink for like a second little leaf. I also have a mod from this series, but I've had it for ages. Now I'm just gonna clean these guys off so I can um so I can use the gold pad without, you know, getting black all over it. I've not used this one. It's first time. First time for everything, right? And see, this one does actually have like a nice gold detail. And then uh, you can also just like use a gold bug on the leaf. But um, yeah, it, it doesn't really show up that well, but it's there. So yeah, I really, really like these little ones. The moth is still my favorite, but um, it's actually on my desk, so I'll quickly stand up because I've been talking about that dying moth. <laughs> it's in a box with stamps. I'll just use the black one so you can really see it. Yeah, there you go. Pretty moth. Yeah, I like this gold one a lot, but um, it's going to go back into my box with um, wax seal supplies, I imagine. Zoom you in a bit. I'm just having a look over there because my bedroom, well, my husband and I's bedroom, is across from my studio. I'm sure you heard that. And that is Job, who is in our dressing, opening up doors just because he can. Now Kiwi's going there and... Ugh, cats. <laughs> yeah, leave a comment if you have cats that get up to all sorts of shenanigans and tell me a funny story of your cats. I do love my cats, I really, really do. But sometimes I'm just like, guys, really? Then I got a sharpener, a wooden sharpener. And you might be like, why the hell do you have a wood sharpener? Uh, this is by a brand called Kum. It is made in Germany. It's a wood cutter, apparently. I have another one of these. It is the best sharpener I have ever owned. So if you have access to a Dilla and Camilla, absolutely recommend. They are dirt cheap, like probably like under three euros potentially four, but <laughs> well worth it. Amazing Good deal. Uh, then I just have a pack of a Caveco, um, what is it, Caramel Brown? Yeah, Caramel Brown cartridges. I usually don't use cartridges, but I like to have a spare pack in my school bag because I do draw with fine fountain pens as well. And um, 
I don't want to be carrying around a bottle, a big glass bottle of ink. So I have these in case I do run out. I, I usually check my cartridges to see if I have to refill them before class, but sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I don't. And it's just emergency cartridges. And then when I was at Le, Le Fure du Nord, I just couldn't resist trying these because they were a Euro 30 for six. And um, yeah, this is uh, the apricot. It's not a pastel kiwi. It's not a pastel orange. Um, it's more like, I would say a regular orange. If I have to uh, compare it to another color, I would say it's probably, probably closest to Kaweco Sun Sunrise Orange, I believe it's called, potentially Sunset Orange. Um, and then this cognac, that is just flat out a dupe for Diamine's Golden Honey. Not Brandy Snap, because Brandy Snap is more golden oakery, but they're very similar. But um, yeah, so this is very similar to Brandy Snap and flat out a dupe for Golden Honey. So if you're running out of the limited edition Golden Honey and you can get these cartridges, there's your solution. So yeah, that was everything that's in this bag. So I'm gonna set that aside. I have three of these, by the way. <laughs> one spare, one for plein airing, and one that holds all my fountain pens. Finally, a bag for my fountain pens. And my next item is this big boy by uh, Superior Labor. Um, it's just a really sturdy cotton pouch. Cause like, this is a basically thick sturdy cotton and then this side is painted to give it some extra sturdiness and yeah um it holds a massive ton this is not the one with the inside pockets as you can see mine is just a plain inside i feel like they're hella expensive but i do apologize for the screaming cats um yeah i feel like they're hella expensive but this will last way, 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 way longer than the cheaper alternatives, to be sure. Um, what I usually do is I put my phone in here, I put my regular traveler's notebook, which goes with me pretty much everywhere, which is just a passport size, so it fits perfectly. And then I put my holster in there, which is also by a Spear Labor, but this is a collab with Nomado. As you can see, their lucky turtle is on there. Is very cute. Um, but yeah, um, I have bought a fine nib Caveco Sport brass pen. Not just because it matches the brass knife, but because these are my favorites of all the Caveco. I mean, like, it's a massive brass pen. It's not to like, right? And normally I only buy broad nib fountain pens, or, you know, I, I will make an exception for the Caveco Perkeo. But, um, because they only come in uh, fine and medium. Um, but yeah, the thing is, uh, I have a diary insert, a planner insert in my traveler's notebook that lives in my bag. And um, yeah, it has like really small grids and you can totally write in it with a broad nib, but a fine nib is just easier. So that's why I opted to get a fine nib pen and then it came with this knife. It's a little bit gimmicky because it's supposed to look like a Mount Fuji. I'll put it down like this and zoom you in a bit. It's supposed to look like Mount Fuji when closed and um, has like cherry blossom detail and uh, yeah. And then there's writing on here, which I cannot read because it's in Japanese. And then it just uh, opens up. I do apologize for the cats. I swear they're just screaming at each other because they can. Yop and Kiwi, Salm is just like casually wandering about, unbothered. And yeah, um, these are a little bit tricky to use, I feel, because you have to like hold them like this so the blade can't flop in, because otherwise it can just like collapse on, you know, on itself. So that's why the safety bit is on. So uh, yeah, I'm not used to that. And I still prefer my mushroom blade. Um, my mushroom knife or garden knife, whatever Dylan Camilla calls it. Um, oh yeah, you can open bottles with it as well. So basically that's why it lives in here in case I have to sharpen a pencil because I don't always use mechanical pencils or um, and 
you know, and I don't always know where my sharpener is. Um, so yeah, or it's not near me and this is stuff like that. So it's just a really handy thing to have. Of course, you can't travel with it if you actually go by a plane or an international train like Eurostar, because I imagine you'll have a lot of explaining to do if you are caught with this and they will take it off you. So there's that. Thankfully, I also have like a keychain which is um, shaped like a key that opens bottles from HEMA a couple of years ago. All, all my bag, uh, all my bags, I bought multiples. <laughs> like, seriously. So yeah, um, that guy is excellent. Very practical. My usual bag is, as you probably imagine, seeing that quite large, it's a big satchel. So that fits in there really well and it helps me to find things. <laughs> Because I was always digging for my phone and, uh, you know, other stuff, and now I'm not. So yeah, I got more of this heart... Uh, well, th was, this was from Flying Tigers of Valentine's Day, and I have a set, but I like them so much, and I've used up quite a lot of the yay and the, you know, the conversation hearts uh, tape, so I figured when I saw them discounted in the Liege Flying Tiger that I might as well grab another tree for like the euro and a half, because that's a very cheap and, you know, why not? Then I have one of my favorite eggs. I love writing with that. Um, if you saw my setup video for my Pelican M200, uh, that's in there and um yeah it's also in uh, a caveco i have in my bag for school to draw with it because it's a beautiful beautiful golden ochre such a good color so smooth i really really love this ink and it's not a limited edition despite the fancy bottle it's just an ink vent one but they're open edition so that's great because otherwise i would be very upset I have another blade. I had started to unpack it, but then I realized I would never remember the brand name. I just got this at Banir. It was quite expensive. This is a swivel blade. It's not the well, a fingertip art knife and is by Fiskars. And it's not the one I really wanted. I want the one with like the super fine knife from um, Cricut, Cricut. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Cricut, I think. And uh, whereas Krika has appeared in Belgium, I, I don't own one. I don't really know what I would do for the Krika. Um, but yeah, since it has appeared in Belgium, I have trying, been trying to find that specific swivel blade. Um, Danny from uh, Muggle Magic DIY slash Wizardry Workshop uses it. And I'm always in a lot of envy. Okay, so basically it's in here with just the flimsiest of plastic over it. Yay, that's a safety hazard right there. But yeah, you should be able to like clip it over your fingers and that should be safer to use. I am terrible at using stuff like this. Um, I have a really sharp paper scalpel from Games Workshop that I have used with mostly without incident. Um, and I really, really like these, but still I, you know, I have some problems with my joints. So this is not the safest option for me. The, the mushroom blade is actually safer, but yeah, sometimes you just really need a paper scalpel because I hate, um, what are they called? The, you know, the ones that you, you break bits off. I hate those. I always end up accidentally cutting myself. So I figured like maybe this is a better option, but I'm not entirely sure that it is. Uh, I'll, I'll try it out a couple of times with wound glue next to me and suture plasters. And uh, I'll let you know how it went. Well, potentially you'll see me with like big plasters on my hands and then you'll know how it went. And then I have just a few more things. I have this from Tiger. It was very cheap. It just like water tracker post-its. I thought they were just like very funny. And um, I don't drink glasses of water. I like, I well, I, they are mugs, but they're half liters. So 
Yeah, I think if I drank all of these in half liters, I would have drank a gallon. So if I wanted to try to drink a gallon, this would be super practical. Um, and then there's like daily laughter. I thought these were super cute. Uh, this was like a euro or so. And I basically got it for the daily laughter ones because it seemed so fun to scrapbook with. So yeah, um, just like cheap fun things from Tiger. Then I have a few Traveler's Notebook things. Is this all of them? No. I have a, a second plastic sheet for my uh, records one, because that is the one that's being set up as my planner. So that is very practical. And then I have a second... Um, this is the... What are they actually called? The zipper case ones, and they're just like a zip file on one side and then they have another side. I'll just open it up. It doesn't have to stay in the packaging. And then the other side has a big clear pocket. And um, these are super practical. Oh, and you can just like put cards or Instax photos here, which is super nice. Um, yeah, these are just mega practical and it was a pain to find the one that's living in my, um, in my, well, on the go traveler's notebook. So I figured when I saw them in stock at Nomado, um, I would just grab one and then I would have a spare, which was a good idea in my book. This is like from like a separate haul that I hadn't filmed yet. It wasn't part of the one I posted recently. And then um, same story with these guys. I just grabbed them. Well, this was stuff I bought, all the Traveler's uh, Notebook stuff was stuff I grabbed at Nomado, uh, well, on their website, when I was buying the knife holster thing. So yeah, this is the repair kit. Um, I have been looking around to see if I could just buy elastic. But this thickness of elastic is really hard to get. So in the end, I just bought a repair kit in case I ever need it. And it also comes with one of the spare metal tabs and an explanation on how you should you know, use everything, which is practical, I'm sure, in Japanese and in English, that is really nice. And yeah, if I ever want a different color rubber band than a brown or dark brown, I have options. Mostly the orange one, I imagine. Um, but yeah, it's it's really just practical to have. You never know when you need it. I do still have one just like regular rubber band. And I also have several spare elastics that came with Traveler Notebooks. So for now, I am good. Then I have a bullet uh, planner stickers. And these are also from Tiger. I think they're like four euros, maybe three. Um, and then, yeah, it's just like all these fun stickers that you can use. I thought they were super cute. I'm usually not one to use like mega bright colors and stuff, but occasionally I do. And then I'm just happy that I have them. And yeah. I. I mean, I don't see myself going for these very quickly, but you never know. Some numbers, a lot of letters. These are like really nice, like where you can just like go notes, works, uh, work notes to do. It's practical. These are fun. Random shapes. I imagine I will be like using these together with friends and like share the ones I really don't want. So at least they will get used up, which is um, good because <laughs> I don't want to waste anything. But yeah, um, I like there's one that says think and forget. <laughs> oh, good. Good heavens. And then, yeah, these uh, day in the week stickers. I wish there were more of these. That would have been like super practical and just instead of just one sheet. And then these guys and these. And these are also fun. So yeah, that is it. That's all the ones that are in this little book. Um, I feel like it's actually fair price for what you get, especially if you're 
into like super fun, bright shapes. And even if you're not, there's always stuff in there you can use and the rest you can just share with friends, which is extra nice. My nearly last item, because there's some stickers in there, uh, is this cute little pouch I got at uh, the museum shop of La Bovary, and, um, which is a museum in, yeah, in Belgium. And I just saw it and I thought it was so funny with all the, like, the, the fake paint stains splattered on it. Well, it's probably just printed on it because the back is, as you can see, just plain. And then it says art in a dark gold and it has a button you can take it all off it's already on but you can take it off and uh it's holographic as you can see and uh it has like a big old stain in the middle like fake paint stain print and it says it's not optional so art is not optional and uh, i just thought that was like a really fun gimmick and i figured like why not um uh, i like this 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 kind of bag for ephemera so um and I have a lot of ephemera, so I always find use for them. And this is by a French brand, and it's spelled like this. Not sure how well the camera picks up on it, but it's not pronounced like this. It's pronounced carte d'art, um, art cards, um, and it's from Paris. But of course, it's made in China as these things go. And I will link him down in the description down below because. And this is super funny. I, I like it a lot. And then I just have some freebie stickers I got. This is uh, Nomado's Lucky Turtle. They include one with every order. So I've got a few. I'm still, you know, keeping them in my ephemera pouches. One day I will use them, I'm sure. And then I got these two um, with uh, Miranda's, you know, spooky little Halloween on Instagram. With Miranda's um, Springoween magazine and... Well, Spigoreen zine. And I love them a lot. It's just like super fun. And uh, there, I have another one from Valloween, from the Valloween zine. Um, and that's with hearts. Um, and I've set that aside in my box of stickers. And then I have a transparent one. I think this one is transparent as well. Uh, and that lives on my laptop. That was from last year's Halloween zine. And yeah, I love these guys. I just love these ghosty stickers. The black one is so fun. I like the, the spring o -ween one with like all the little flowers in it. So I'm just like setting them aside for now because I would, you know, want to journal with them one day. So and here it is, all the stuff uh, I got during April that I haven't shown in another video. Well, at least all the stuff I could fit in the frame right now, because you know the bags that I spoke about earlier don't fit in here anymore. Neither does the washi set. But hey, I at least managed to get everything else in screen, more or less. So there's that. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what your favorite item is. Are we item twins? Did you see anything you would like to add to your own station resupply? Or just leave a comment full stop. If you do leave a comment, please be kind. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already and want to stick around for more shenanigans in motion. Hit that notification bell so YouTube hopefully will tell you when I have uploaded a new video. And that's pretty much it. The Belgian song for today is L'Enfer by Stromae. And um, yeah, there will be a cat clip as per usual. Hopefully one where they won't be screaming at each other like they did most of the video. Ah, <laughs> uh, cats. I do love my cats. So, um, you know, the screaming is just something that happens on occasion. But yeah, that was it for today. I hope the screaming cats didn't bother you too much and that you enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.